Yes, even with a small channel, you can absolutely trigger the YouTube algorithm to drive a whole lot of views and grow your channel. For example, check this out. In the first seven days of this video's release, it drove a whopping 147 views. Not a whole lot by any stretch of the imagination. And yet today the video has driven 365,000 views and every day it drives hundreds of views and gains my channel subscribers. You see, my channel now is two years old, just a bit older than two years, and I released this particular video in early June, June 6, 2016 to be exact. And at the time, my channel was small, had very few subscribers. It obviously wasn't driving a lot of views. And yet today, the channel is making money. I've got brand deals, I'm doing all kinds of things. Really cool prop. So I wanna let you know that beyond a shadow of a doubt, you too can grow a channel no matter what. Do this. You wanna be able to really understand and break down what watch time is and how even a small channel can trigger watch time to trigger the YouTube algorithm to get those views. And the secret lies in this button here. And you see this particular video today has driven over 1 million minutes of watch time. And for most YouTubers, they kind of get this whole watch time thing mixed up. They believe this is what you need. And a huge amount of watch time in order to get your video seen, to get exposure and so on. And yet looking at this particular image here, you can see that when I published this video, it had very few views for about a month or so. And then after four weeks, five weeks, the views started increasing, so did the watch time and I broke out. Now as you publish videos, it's really important to pay attention to a few key metrics. And if you notice this graph here, the green arrow uh, points to average view duration. And notice if you click that, you will be taken to audience retention. And here's what's up, anybody can do this. These metrics are not over the top. These metrics are not like rock star status. They're pretty poor as a matter of fact. And when we study the watch time metrics, we wanna pay attention to average view duration as well as relative audience retention. Now notice when you land on this particular graph with inside the YouTube analytics, you're not gonna be looking at relative audience retention. Instead, it's set to absolute retention. So make sure to click the button that says relative audience retention, and that will take you to this particular graph. And as you can see here, we've got slightly above average video metrics for this particular video. And the question I get all the time is what is considered good audience retention? There's no one answer and here's why. How YouTube measures audience retention is based on specific videos that are ranking for specific keyword phrases. So here you can see I searched for iMovie effects iPhone, which is very, very specific. There, there's a few things going on here. We'll talk about it as we move forward. But really what's happening is YouTube is gonna look at the top videos ranking for a particular keyword phrase I've targeted. And in this case, again, it's iMovie Effects iPhone. So obviously I published this particular video and then these are the metrics for the first seven days of the video's release. And as mentioned, you can see here, the video has only driven 147 views. So your goal is really quite simple, to publish a video that has better audience retention than the videos that are currently ranking for the keyword phrase you want to target. Now, as mentioned, it really begins with the keyword phrase. And I, I think what a lot of people don't understand is the keyword phrase that you choose will dramatically impact your audience retention. Because the more you understand what a viewer wants in a video, the easier it is to create a video with high retention by giving the viewer what they want. So while accumulated watch time minutes can really help, for example, this video now has over a million minutes of watch time accumulated, what matters is the retention. So we've got accumulated minutes watched, audience retention, and the real big one, watch time per impression. And this is the new information that recently YouTube has been talking a lot about. And even better, you can access this information in the new studio. 
For example, when you log into the Creator Studio, notice the blue link at the top, YouTube Studio Beta. Click that and then click on Reach Viewers and you're given additional insights on your video's performance that will dramatically impact your watch time. And this is how small YouTubers can compete. For example, the video in question has an impression click-through rate of 5.2%. How you can figure this is broken down is pretty simple. If somebody searches YouTube for iMovie effects iPhone and they show my video 100 times and the video below mine 100 times, well, mine gets clicked 5.2 times per 100 impressions. So YouTube shows my video 100 times and then my video is clicked 5.2 times. So when we talk about impression click-through rate, what we're really talking about is your video is competing against the other videos that are showing up in search. This is why your thumbnail needs to be really dialed in and effective at winning the click. And here's what I wanna draw your attention to. So think about the viewer who searches for iMovie effects iPhone. What is it that they want? What is it that they're looking for? Well, they want a iMovie effects for their iPhone. And notice my thumbnail. It only has two words that are very easy to read. They stand out and those words are iMovie effects. And notice the other videos that are ranking do not include the word effects. Without question, because I've added the words from the search term into my thumbnail, I'm driving more clicks. Do this. Number one, begin by targeting specific keyword phrases where you understand exactly what the viewer is searching for. That'll give you a huge advantage at creating videos with high retention, which equals rankings. Now, next, you wanna think, what is the focus keyword? In other words, let's say you target a keyword phrase that's really long, it's like five or six words. You don't have to, and I don't think you should, add all of those words to your thumbnail. Instead, simply think, what are the most important words, and then add those. So notice, in my particular thumbnail, I only added two words to my thumbnail that I felt were the focus. iMovie effects. And the reason why is when a viewer sees that, that's searching for that thing, they don't even think about it and they've already clicked because I'm giving them what they want. Number three is you've gotta deliver on the viewer needs and wants. Whatever they're searching for, you've gotta talk about that and get into that very thing within seconds. And lastly, number four, you wanna look for opportunity. And opportunity is a video ranking for the keyword phrase you wanna target without a lot of views. And sure enough, the video that's ranking number two only has 9,900 plus views or so. It's not a lot, and what I do is I take 10% of that video's view total and I ask myself, can I drive that many views in the first few weeks of my video's release? And in this case, that would be less than 1,000 views. For my channel, I'm confident I can do that in the first week or two of the video's release, and I know that is opportunity. Do this, check out the video in the YouTube card now that will help you identify opportunity by leveraging the power of keyword research. And if you wanna grow a channel, make sure to subscribe. Click on the yellow B to the G icon below. You'll subscribe, I'll continue to share the strategies and tactics that have allowed me to grow and you'll feed a poodle. I've got two and they're hungry. I'll see you next time, you dig?